welcome back. It's 2-1 right now. Yumi Ho, looking strong as ever, playing his own style, marching to his own beat. Uh, really making it work. Yeah. Uh, marching to his own beat, I don't know, sitting around to his own beat, <laughs> anchoring. That's, yeah. that's pretty, pretty accurate, but great play. Hard to stop. Very frustrating play against Cactus Valley, though. Gigantic map, four-player map. Can he, will he do that type of style here? We'll have to see. I mean, take a look at Hyun here in the booth. You can see a lot of tension here. Is I mean, what do you do against this Terran who just will not move? He's, he's clearly studied all the angles of engagement on these maps. Cactus Valley, a different map, but I would not be surprised if he's fairly good at making this style of play work on this map as well. Excuse me, how he can probably do it anywhere. Zerg's practice against this probably the least. Against exactly what Gumio's doing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like people yeah, go that just mech an okay amount. There's, but like there's this always type. that one offshoot player yeah. who goes like who plays like this all the time. They don't have no Welcome practice. It's tough. To it's true. It's good. This is good. Good point. In the bottom right, in the red, our Terran player up to one. MVP Gumio. And in the bottom left, in the blue, needs to turn this around. Look at Hyun. Okay, so first thing first, they're both at the bottom. Which, uh, if, we, if he does mech, it's really important to point out mm -hmm. here. Um, it would be a very different game if they were in diagonal spawns. Yeah. Definitely the case. A lot closer. Attacks can happen so much quicker like that with less flanks because you have a whole side that just doesn't even exist. It's the edge of the world. Right. We've actually, in this Code A, seen a lot more hidden expansions. I don't think we're going to have it in the series just because of the two players playing. Yeah. Agreed. But on, on this map especially, people have occasionally just taken one of the top two mains because for some reason, historically in StarCraft 2, people just won't check there as much. Even though it's clearly not as good to take another main like it was in, uh, in Brood War, people just don't do it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, checking for that. So occasionally we've seen people get thrown off. Yeah, I tell you, I saw a lot of hidden expands as well over at I Am Shenzhen yeah. uh, you know, last week. And definitely something that right now is, is around in the current meta. Well, especially, as you said, you know these bigger maps. Definitely something you can choose. So uh, let's see how exactly they opt to um, to open up here. I mean, we got extractor pool here. Everything's looking very normal. I guess the real question is, what does Gumiho choose to do this game? Mm. Anything Hyun does isn't that extraordinary, even if yeah. it's a rush, right? He's mostly playing reactive because he kind of needs to figure out if you're going mech or not. Uh, you think there's any chance he could cheese this game? Yeah, sure. Why not? Like, if I was Hyun at this point, I think I would definitely consider it. I think I'd look at it and be like, how would I do against a perfectly made mech army on this map? Do I not feel confident? Okay, why don't I try to kill him early? Because Hyun yeah. is very good at early attacks. He like, wins a lot of his tournament matches doing just that. Yeah. Now we're seeing if the Silver can get over the exact spot on that rock. Uh -oh. Okay, he barely yeah. survives. Um, oh, he's going to lift the barracks. Oof. Uh-oh. Painful. Here we go. That Overlord's in trouble right now. He's on borrowed time, Tasis. Yeah, so he takes that out with the vision of the barracks, and now he can land that over here at the front. Gumio really on top of his game. Mm -hmm. Don't see that as often anymore. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> and accidentally locking out his Marines. Oh, I guess that's all right. He's going to rally out there as well. Yeah, might as well. Now, what's cool about this kind of follow-up play is that he killed the Overlord, so Zerg is uh, kind of abruptly in the dark. Mm -hmm. He's 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 one of these guys that's uh, Zerg doesn't normally get lights out at this moment here, and so well now he knows. But it had Zerg not checked there, that could have been pretty bad. That could have been pretty problematic. Yeah. But this is a, a pretty smart follow-up play here. Sure. From Gumi Home. Look at this. That. Banelings. That means a lot. Like he is not doing that because he thinks Hellbats might be on the way. I tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess. Let's take a few things to note right now. Mm -hmm. First of all, Marines are on the outside. Yeah. Don't know if they're going to stay there, but we got to keep an eye on that for now. Yeah, yeah. Command center and barracks are much harder to destroy with Banelings. That's true. So that can definitely go poorly there for Zerg. 
Uh, Marines are also moving out now to the left side of the map, which is really bad. Oh, they're way over committing. Yeah. Speed is about to finish. He's going to lose those Marines. And I'm, I'm even if it's hard to kill those with Banelings, they can be killed by Banelings, which means they will die, right? I'm wondering if this was an improv build here. Once Gumiho identified, he could get the Overlord. If he actually, imp like, like, um, just made those. You see the Marines just getting picked off here. It's just weird that he had them all outside and then did that. It's right? like he's expecting Hyun to play like the most greedy ever, I guess. But now with this many Lings and the fact that he can make Banes, he will destroy the barracks and then it's going to be pretty tough. I guess he does have a factory about to finish up. Here's the thing. I think I think Gumiho knows this exact thing is coming. Maybe yeah, not man. he's got this a tech lab being out oh, here. Maybe not. Armory. He's dead. He's he just dead. made two armories. Like, that's that's too much. He's being so greedy this game. I can't believe he actually went three Seven command drones. center. Well, I don't think I don't think uh, Hyun actually believes that he can win with this, even though he in fact it can. Oh my God! What? What? You gotta be kidding me! This you is are the most kidding me! Thing I've ever seen. He just didn't make enough banelings. And no! That was the weirdest half all in I've ever seen. Because if you're gonna make that many banelings, oh why are you seven God. drones behind? Like, and Gumiho wow. is like, and now Gumiho, he's, Gumiho is like going golden sacks, like greedy and and. Seriously. And this is... Oh, Look, he, he, he played this as greedily as possible, and the I lack of Banelings bailed him out. Yeah, and the, he, it was the he got a bailout. bonus at the end of the year. Yeah. Two armories upgrading Maybe before he was even made. more than the SCVs are making, man. Oh, my God. This is not even fair. The, only 1% of games looks like this. Yeah, this game is a 1%er, all right. That is unbelievable. I can't believe that... It's a one one start as the Evo start, like as mech. As mech. Oh man. Now I drones can't. weren't uh. killed, but having an attack fail that hard is almost like drones dying because you didn't make drones, you made lings, you know? Look at this, he's even making depots behind this, behind oh, the wallet, because he's he's not totally sure if there's just gonna be another follow up. The worst attack ever. It was pretty bad. That's been the worst attack in Code. Was it the worst attack? Yes, Artos, it actually was. I guess you cast it all, Code. I cast it all of it, man. I guess so, I'll go with it. Uh, it definitely, it definitely was a that was, pretty big that fail. That was pretty bad. Now, I guess the only thing that could have made that attack go even better um, for Gumiho is, is had Zerg made Morlings behind that and tried to bust it down again and failed. Yeah. But I mean, I don't, I don't even. Know. I'm at a loss. So is he. <laughs> so is he. And now we're going to have Terran take a third base. And notice the positioning here of the siege tanks. You could just kind of get away with this. Yeah, there's not like a whole lot that you can do here. He's, I mean, he's like getting his upgrades for his roaches right now. Thing is, he's so not going to have speed for a super long time. And by the time he does, everything should be nailed up pretty tight. But I, I think he on. I think he has to get aggressive this game because if he tries to go in that super macro game again, I mean, I guess this map is bigger, so he has more places that he can go and expand to. Right. Like, he can just expand to the top left, and if Kumio really presses all his forces towards the bottom left, uh, then Hyun can even expand towards the top right, you know, and, like, kind of yeah, just yeah. rotate around the map and wear Kumio out, perhaps. I wouldn't I be surprised, though, if Hyun really goes for a push, too. Just because of how hard it's been to break Gumio all day. Yeah, that's true too. I mean, it depends on if, if if Hyun is willing to try to play the map like sort of like Gumio did last time, or if also I guess if Gumio just gets too greedy. I guess this is the game where he's not getting five command centers on three bases so far. <laughs> so that's something to kind of factor in here. And uh, let's see here. I mean, really. This all goes back to that early attack, but Gumiho is capitalizing on this in every possible way. Mm -hmm. well. <laughs> oh. I mean, there's just, there's, he, he, he is so incredibly ahead. Terran right now is mecking against Zerg and beating Zerg in supply. By just a little margin, but just but think about that. It's a pretty big deal. That's pretty big. Reminiscent of game one, which was a pretty big roll. Well, uh, Hyun just staying on the same tech route that we've seen from him, but again... This game isn't going to look exactly like the last game because of how many bases are and how far apart they can be. But uh, the way that Gumiho is probably going to try to deal with that is by running around large numbers of Blue Flame Hellions and trying to make sure that bases that are far away 
are basically not mining. You know, just constantly yeah. kill all the drones at them and uh, and kind of wear Hyun out like that. And that's hard for Zerg to deal with. You'd think that it would be not too bad, like put up some spines and stuff. But, hell, you even put up four spines, which already is a lot of money. And he sends up 12 Blue Flame Hellings. You're still losing every drone. He's not really losing that much to do it. Yeah, you can sack mineral units as you build your gas base army. Yeah. As long as you're taking out their drones. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Back to the cactuses over there. So he's going to try to come over here and drop, probably just right onto the workers. Yeah. You see, uh, he had a little bit misplaced there with his army. Four that's going to do all right. Treating that like it wasn't mech, actually. Treating that like it was uh, Medic Marine. Yeah, kind of. Um, and so he drops over here, um, takes out the uh, spine crawler, and then he just picks up and boosts to the next location. Oh, look at this, right over here. Yeah, the next location is on top of the drones that ran away. <laughs> Roaches do come up, so he will have to get out. Still saves all four of those. Oh, oh my god. god. No! Okay, he actually gets away. I've tried it. Yeah, I would have done the same thing. I would have lost all my health. Right kill like, like one drone. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, I guess Gumio, who plays this all the time, knows. I guess he knows exactly what is reasonable and not reasonable. Now, he's going to have a six health at drop. Uh-oh. This is going to be funny. It's... 2013. <laughs> well, now now it's actually 2011. We got a third <laughs> drop over here. Oh, SCV's pulled. Oh, he's actually this doing was, a fast timing. This push. is actually quite unnecessary, but it's going to be quite exciting as well. Taren is maxed out. He's going to throw everything in the kitchen sink at his opponent. Yeah, dropping Hellbats all over these roaches right now. He's going to be able to wipe them out within a matter of seconds. Very fast signing push here at 200 supply before Hyun can max out himself. Right before Hyun is even hitting 2-2. Two -two. He's actually going to be hitting uh, what is currently the layer. This is kind of a crazy, crazy attack, but I think this just works. Notice the surplus in uh, minerals here, by the way. Um, poor Gumiho. Does this yeah. work? I well, mean, he's doing a great job so far, Tasteless. With these seed shanks here, it's going to be very hard to attack up with high health. Whoa, oh, wow. Roaches. Yeah, that's a great move right there. Young going to be able to take out quite a few of these seed shanks. He's continuing to press forward. Now, keep in mind, there's uh, 17 more roaches on the way up here, and the roaches are actually starting to get a pretty good surround, really making me wonder if this was really the necessary play. I think he thought that, that you he know, was on such a big map that he yeah. could just kill him off here before it becomes really difficult with Yun taking everywhere. But, like, you know, I think, I actually think the main problem with what we just saw here was the amount of Hellbats that he suicided on the high, the morphing high. Yeah, I think and he you're didn't right. get it. I think he needed some more of those in the front. Yeah, if he had gotten that, that'd be good. But, like, he absolutely did not. He just lost all his units. If all those units were standing in front of those siege tanks, like, he would still be doing the push. And look, he wants so the bad Thor to here. kill it. I have one mission. Well, he will not get that um, the hive there, unfortunately. What a weird attack. Yeah. It would have been much cooler if it had worked, but it didn't. So now we're kind of sitting here scratching our heads as this game is balanced out. Or maybe I should say to gone to Zerg's favor because uh, Terran lost a lot of tanks of Thors, which take a long time to make. He was trying to do a frontal attack, like a true frontal, like, dug-in attack, as well as a huge drop at the same time. That doesn't make sense. Like, you can... You can harass two areas at the same time, but you're not... Right? It's... It was just too much. What a weird game. Hmm. Well, Gumio still has more supply. He's about to have through three. He has four bases. I guess it's still fine. Uh, yeah, 58 he's... workers to uh, 80. He's all right, but he's definitely given Hyun a, a, a fair chance at fighting back. And he's going to try to push out again here. This time going down, I think, a little bit more collected. <laughs> as probably he should just face his Zergon head to head. Instead of trying to, you know, outmaneuver him, Zerg's just always going to have more units in general with Mech, yeah. uh, against Mech, so they can split generally more easily. Instead of with uh, Marine Marauder, where it's a little bit more difficult to calculate on the fly. Yeah. Well, it looks like right now uh, he's getting ready to drop all over this army with Hellbats. And go ahead and do a nice, uh, well, drop on top of it, kind of like a flank. Some good blinding clouds do go down, but this is mostly Hellbats, so they don't getting, care about it too, too much. Getting the Roach War in there, continuing to press forward. This attack might actually do it. Now, you got to remember how good Thors actually are against Roaches. They're pretty incredible. Yeah. Uh, when you get enough of them in numbers, I think a lot of times people might think they're not as strong because you see, like, one Thor against a bunch of Roaches. Yeah. But when you get enough, 
They're doing so much damage. Yeah, they eventually beat roaches. Well, I guess if you max out both, I'm not. Well, no, I'm towards my win. I don't know. But anyways, normally, yeah, that's definitely the case. And I think that's now going to do it for real. Um, he's taking out this base and that base as well. Uh, the upper bases can easily be dropped. We have a swarm host here for novelty's purpose. GG. Gumiho moves on to Code S. And that is our final chapter here for Code A, guys. Wow. Well, Gumio wins 3-1 to one over Hyun. It was actually a pretty good series. Uh, some very long games in there. More aggressive Gumio in game four. But, uh, you know, a well-deserved entry into Code S. Kind of sucks that Hyun doesn't make it in. It's too bad, but it's also um, it's kind of justice for how Hyun played. Hyun, that last, this game specifically. Uh, he was almost as stubborn as Gumiho. Yeah, well, the Bailing play was weird. He just didn't actually kill the Barracks. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's, that sucked. That, that that's was, just not okay. You saw the rough. command center wallet. Right you saw the Barracks wallet. It's and, a, I mean, Gumio could not have been more greedy. That's You're not supposed to be able to get away with that. There is room for Zerg to punish that. It is mm -hmm. not something where um, and Terran can do that every time and win. That's actually a risky gamble that he took. Yeah. And, I mean, look at this. The, the four maps. It's like game one. Lose 23 drones, die. Game two, he goes bio, kill him. Game three, Gumiho abuses maps so hard. Not, I'm not trying to take anything away. I'm just like kind of sum this up. Sure, this sure. was a hard, hard series for Hyun. And then of course, game four was just like that Baneling bus. It just things didn't go right in the series for him. It's unfortunate. Our players who move on today: Zest with a 3-0, then Hero with a 3-0, and finally Gumiho with a 3-1. And that means two more Protoss and a Terran making it through. That's going to give us 11, 12, and 9 here, as you see, guys. A ridiculous, ridiculous season of GSL Code S coming up for you. Going to be the final Code S of the year. Definitely don't miss out. And I, I don't know. I'm very happy with the players that we have here. I know that there were some upsets. I personally thought Yum was going to move on, but I haven't seen how Gumiho played here today. Play I well. like how different it is. I like the flavor. Mm -hmm. I like that um, he marches to his own beat, or turtles to his own beat, perhaps. Yeah, certainly. And uh, it's cool. It's going to be another great addition here to Code S. Obviously, having Zess and Hero, nobody can complain about. Two of the best Protosses in the world, easily. Yeah. Look at that Protoss lineup. Rain, SOS, Parting, Zest, Hero, Classic. And then you have other guys like Stork and Myungshik and Deer in there. It's just like... The Protoss line is insane. Same can be said about Terran. Look at that. Maru Innovation Flash. And you got like Bomber Fantasy Beyond MMA. What? Just crazy, man. Look at the Zergs. Sue, Dark Life, Beal, Curious Rogue. Like, you can't get a better code S than this. It's, it's too good. <laughs> ah! I, 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 I think it's going to be a real treat. We got all the players back in three. We've got three seasons to get them all together here now. And we're going to end this whole year with, I think, like I said, the best code S we could possibly have. Um, code S will be beginning on what day? I believe it's Friday next week. I believe it's Friday next week. I actually am going on vacation. So it is Friday next week. All right, there you go. That's why you're the and best. And then after that, of course, artosis. Wednesday and Friday. Yep. Always. So um, uh, join us for that. I'll be out of town, uh, but I'll be back in Code S about uh, you know, two weeks after that. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us here at the GSL Code A. We'll see you at the GSL Code S. We love you. Good night.